Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about buckling and how you can deal with it using Karamba 3D. For the example I chose a very simple structure. It consists of a beam uh, with a rotational spring at the bottom and a normal force at the top. Um, the symbolic system looks like this. Here's the beam, here is the hinge with the rotational spring of, con of uh, stiffness C as the force acting. And um, this system is stable until this force F reaches a certain level. Um, and at the point of instability, um, this uh, beam will sway sideways. Now let's imagine that uh, we have a very small displacement to the side. Let's call this the eccentricity E. Then we we'll see that the force also travels sideways and then causes here at the bottom a bending moment which is equal to F times E. In case of the buckling load it's the critical force F times the eccentricity E. But remember E can be very small. That's the destabilizing moment. The stabilizing moment is um, equal to the spring stiffness C times the rotation angle alpha. And if this angle is very small, then we can say that alpha is equal to eccentricity divided by the length of this uh, column here. So I can now say instead of C times alpha, it's C times eccentricity divided by length. And now we see that this eccentricity cancels out and what remains is that the critical load is equal to the spring stiffness divided by the height of the column. And that's also logical because uh, the higher the spring stiffness, the higher the uh, critical load and uh, the higher the, the column, also the lower the buckling load. And one sees that uh, this normal force here, if it's compressive, softens the system, so to say. The opposite would be true if we would have here tension in the system, then this would have a stiffening effect. The setup in Caramba 3D looks like this. We have here the line, which defines the axis of the column. Line to beam turns the line into a, a beam um, element. Here, this uh, modify element component uh, can be used to change the cross section on the fly, uh, namely here the height, which is actually the diameter of the circular hollow cross section and the wall thickness. Then um, I have here defined a fully fixed support. The reason for this is that at the moment it's not possible to define spring stiffnesses at the supports. Instead, I use a beam joint at the start of the beam, a joint uh, about the local y-axis and uh, via this uh, joint I can supply here a rotational spring stiffness of in this case 800 kilonewton meter per rad. The load is a point load as you can see here it's uh, pointing downwards um, the end of the column. And this uh, adds up in the assembly component to a structural model, which can then be analyzed. Um, I use this analyze TH2 component because this component um, um, calculates the system and calculates the so-called second order theory normal force N2. Um, this can be visualized here. The concept behind this is that, um, um, that the normal force which causes stresses in the system um, is different from or can be different from the normal force which changes the stiffness of the system. And N2 is only changing the stiffness. It makes the system softer in case it's uh, 
a negative, a compressive uh, cross-sectional force. It makes the system stiffer if it's a tensile force. So this component here uh, takes this into account and calculates this N2 force. The buckling modes and the buckling load factors can be calculated using this uh, buckling modes component. Um, in case of buckling, it's always the first buckling mode which uh, governs the behavior of the system. Um, so I set here the um, number of buckling modes to one. These two uh, input plugs can be left normally unchanged. And what results here is a model which has now buckling modes as its uh, load cases. And let's take a look at this buckling mode. Uh, as you can see, uh, the buckling uh, makes the column sway sideways. And um, what you also get out here is uh, a list of buckling load factors. These are factors which, with which you have to multiply the external loads to reach the critical load which makes the system buckle. In this case, I would have to multiply the external load of 10 kN by a factor of 3.4 to get the uh, linear buckling load. In order to check now this result against the theoretical value, I uh, used here this expression C divided by L and uh, L is, as I've said, 5 meters, C is 800. And the theoretical value for N critical is 160 kilonewton, which is not what uh, we get out here. What you get out here is uh, 34 kilonewton. That's here. Uh, it's uh, multiplying the external load times this buckling load factor. The reason for this is that uh, buckling in this case is not only governed by the rotational spring here, but also by the stiffness of the column itself. You can see this because um, the column is curved. Now, um, in order to get closer to the theoretical value, one needs therefore to increase the bending stiffness of the column. And I do this here by increasing the height and the wall thickness of the cross section. So if I make the column very thick, you see that this value here approaches 160. Um, not quite because of numerical inaccuracy, but uh, to a very good uh, degree. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.